What's going on guys and welcome back. We are here for another suspension video on these VR1 boots. So if you guys have been following, I did my initial overview and then me and Bruce went out and we did some changes with how they come as a completely stock unit. So no spring changes, no valving changes, no nothing. Well, now we're gonna be getting into different components. So this video, we're gonna be putting in the heavy duty torsion springs in the rear. So your VR1s, your XCs, We'll just stay with those for right now because we're talking about a VR1. They come with your standard duty torsion springs, which are a very, in our opinion, very light duty torsion spring. They're not heavy duty at all. Uh, the 23 XCRs do come with the heavy duty torsion springs, so they're kind of out of the, the realm of it. So if you followed what we did with my XCR last year, um, which they did not come with heavy duties, we pushed a lot of people to the heavy duty and it helped a lot. So we are obviously in the same boat on this year. We're just trying to do this step by step. So like I said, last video, we did uh, suspension tuning with all factory components. And now we're going to be changing the heavy duty torsion or the standard duty torsion springs out for heavy duty torsion springs. Now torsion springs, if you guys don't know, is this part right here. So this is uh, your torsion spring. It's your slider and this is your adjuster block. So per the last video, we were on the highest setting. You have low, medium, high. And stock, you're definitely gonna wanna be on high if you weigh anywhere in the realm of like the 180 to 200 mark. Um, but the heavy duties, which we have here, the, and we've talked a ton about them, but they're a bigger wire and they're different pound per degree. So as they go through the range of motion, it's a just a stiffer spring all the way around. So these are the two. Um, they come in a pair, but these are individual part numbers here. So you have 704-5207-329, and then 5208 is the other one. So they're left hand and right hand, obviously. So we're gonna go ahead and throw these in and let you guys know what they feel like when we put them in. So they're very easy to change. You need two 15 millimeter wrenches for this, and you need two 13 millimeter wrenches for these. And then this pin right here, you're gonna pull that safety pin out pull that pin and it's just going to lift right out of there and and right around so i have this stand so i lower it down just to take a little bit of pressure off and that all those bolts will come right out it's a very easy process um but i'm going to put them in and uh go ride it just the way that it is now and then go from there and then next video we'll be replacing uh different shocks with different valving in it different front springs and most likely different valved front shocks. But again, this one we're just doing heavy duty torsion springs to go from there. So I'm gonna get it on the ground. So we went down just till it touched the ground, pull the, the 15 millimeter bolt out, drop the arm, rear torque arm as, it's not the correct, we'll just say rear arm. <clears throat> and like you said, you pull that pin out and then you literally lift that spring right out of there. And it'll come around, you pull it all off. And then you slap the new one on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to go ride this thing. and I'll let you guys know what it's like when we're all done. So I already have the other side in there. That's the new spring. Uh, it's a bigger, like I said, bigger wire. It's a bigger diameter up here, which I have new, um, actually new bushings to go in there. But that we're going to try that later on in the year and see what they do. And we'll go from there. So I'm going to go ride this thing and see what it does. <laughs>
guys, so we went and did some riding. I had a very busy week last week, so this video, as we stated, is just heavy duty rear torsion springs. And we did some riding on it. I went from settings one, two, three, you know, just even just on one side, you know, so medium on one, low on the other side, really to get a feel and it, it let you guys know what I felt. So we kind of had a feeling of what this outcome was gonna be, but we did it anyway, just to see. So pros, holds the butt of the sled up much better than the standard duty. Um, as we've said, it's a, it's a larger wire, it's more pounds per degree. So it holds the butt of the sled up <clears throat> all around while you're just sitting on it, while you're going down the trail, when you're going through bumps, when you're going to corners, when you accelerate, it holds that butt up better. There's not nearly as much transfer uh, to the rear like we saw with the uh, standard duty torsion springs. It helps when you get into like a big G out um, because it's going to have better anti-bottoming. It's not just gonna blow right through it and really rely on the um, valving of the rear shock to also help, you know, there's, there's more force pushing that sled back up, pushing you and that sled back up, I should say. So a lot of pros, um, it helps turn better because it keeps the front of that, or the back of that sled up and it gives you more ski pressure instead of it just squatting back and, you know, lifting the skis and then not ever being able to turn. So all good things there. The one, probably the worst thing I would say, and now we're gonna get into the cons, is the rebound. So as we've talked about before, with these shocks being needle shocks, there's not a lot of rebound in them. And next video, I'm gonna be, there's gonna be an example of what exactly rebound is that you guys are gonna help explain, but it's pretty much how fast that rear suspension comes back. So when you put more spring to that rear shock, there's not anything slowing it down. So it's gonna come back really fast. It's almost gonna feel like a pogo stick. So yes, it's gonna help in a lot of senses and it's gonna help the sled work better. But if you're really, really riding hard and you're getting in the really big uh, consecutive bumps, it's gonna really start kicking your, it's gonna bounce back into your butt. And that is the one con that we have to say because it's just, it is what it is. So yes, there's a lot of good things, but there is that. Um, if you're just leisurely riding, yeah, it's, it's, you're not gonna notice it that much. You know, if you're gonna hit a bump once every mile, you know, it's not that bad. But if you're in a really bad section and you're pounding through them and it's pretty big, that thing's gonna just keep kicking back and kicking back. And a lot of people don't like it. I don't like it, Bruce doesn't like it. Anyone that we've had test this out does not like it, which is why, in the next video, we get into valving um, the rear suspension and slowing that down and changing that. So yes, very big improvement over stock. Um, highly recommend it for a lot of guys because it's just gonna make the overall uh, ride and, and feel of the sled better. It just has some negative characteristics, which again, I mean, they are, I don't wanna say, it has to be a specific circumstance because you're going to feel it kind of regardless with that with that rear suspension or that rear shock not having a ton of valving in it. But again, it's it's going to be better. It's going to turn better. It's going to hold you up better. So um, highly recommend it. Again, I'm 200 ish pounds right now, depending on how many cookies Bruce feeds me, and it really helped the overall feel of the sled. The only other thing that I could say is really a con of it is it makes the front end feel soft now. And again, we've talked about this thing only having 80 pound front springs, which next video we're changing, but it makes the front end feel softer. And just like we talked about in the completely stock suspension video of it kind of teetering, now you could really feel it too soft in the front. And yes, you could click, run into your clickers, which were already pretty much all the way in, were like three out. <clears throat> the only problem is it does make it very harsh, which I also touch on in the next video. But overall, heavy duty, heavy duty torsion springs, if you're 170 on, much needed. Obviously, the heavier you are, you gotta get in the extra heavy duty or the trap spring, but that is just gonna make that, that rebound feel even worse because there's even more spring there to come back. So yes, it will help, but it's also gonna not help in some other situations, but I hope that gives you guys kind of an idea of what this is feeling or what it's gonna feel like. 
when you put them on. We do highly recommend them for 99% of the people. I mean, if you're down in like the 150 range, then you should be able to get away with um, the standard duty depending on your riding style. But um, definitely we're one step closer to getting these things to work properly. And uh, I'm glad that you guys are here for the long, you know, for the ride. And uh, I hope you guys are, you know, learning from everything that we're doing. And again, next video, we are going, we're putting uh, shocks all the way around, springs all the way around, and really trying to get this thing to work proper. So uh, that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you liked it. I hope it helped. Um, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to go to 322threads.com and get all your merch like this shirt and this hat. And I'll see you guys in the next one.